Well, hello again, class. Today is June 18th, and this is module number three, Perception and Communication. Um, once again, I'm in the Michael Fowle Library at the University of Oklahoma campus. Um, and I'm also wearing an Oklahoma shirt, but don't worry, I get chastised here when I was teaching, uh, when I teach my OU classes, when I wear burnt orange, so it really doesn't matter, although it's more for Texas than Oklahoma State. But anyway, um, moving right along. Um, not much has changed since the last time we talked. The Thunder are now down 2-1, uh, but I think tomorrow night they're going to come back and uh, even the series at 2-2, two, 2-all, two, two uh, and then they'll get to bring it back to Oklahoma City and win in Game 7. It'll be an epic series, but, you know, what do I know? Um, anyway, so let's talk about perception and communication. First of all, this is Chapter 3 in your book, as well as Module Number 3. Um, the advertising assignment is... Uh, is due Friday at midnight. Uh, the first assignment is due tonight, um, the one on a first look at communication, interpersonal communication, uh, is due tonight at midnight. Uh, both to both those are due to the Dropbox and the weekly discussion, or the discussion uh, board. And then I'll post another weekly discussion here this afternoon or tomorrow. Um, I'll have to think of what I want to talk about. Um, I don't know what communication things have happened uh, since this week. We'll see. I'll check out the YouTubes. All right, so let's talk about perception and communication. Um, first of all, the process of human communication is um, it's an active process of interpreting information. So we don't just, uh, um, you, you know, you can see we can see the same two people can see the same person and interpret their messages differently. Um, so, uh, it's an active process. Um, you select different parts of a person that you perceive. Uh, as you get to know the person, you probably perceive different parts of them as you uh, get to know them better. Um, so, some of the uh, reasons we have different selection of what we perceive is uh, um, kind of somewhat based upon our culture. I mean, um, there's this concept of outgroup homogeneity, which means that you view your own group as homogeneous or as heterogeneous, whereas you view other groups as all the same. So, like, we think as Oklahoma as being a very diverse peop uh, group of, uh, you know, very diverse group. We think of people from Texas that are all the same, whereas other places in the country, they think of Oklahoma, they're all the same. And they have certain perceptions of what people in Oklahoma are like. Um, we all probably think all New Yorkers as being the same, whereas they say, well, we're, we're very diverse. So, uh, we per perceive different things selectively. Um, and sometimes we do that incorrectly. Uh, there's two different attributional errors. Um, one is the self-serving bias, which is we attribute, interpret them for some particular reason. And then there's like a fundamental error, like we just get things wrong. Then I want to talk about stereotyping a little bit. Um, Stereotyping is gets a bad rap, but something that we do all the time. We see somebody, we immediately stereotype them, and it's not inherently bad. We think of stereotyping as bad, um, but it's not inherently bad. Uh, but that uh, what you do with those stereotypes can be bad. I mean, we, we do it all the time. You know, you're stereotyping me as you see me in this uh, in this video, um, depending on what I'm wearing, and if you could. You know, see the you know if you if I actually taught your class and you saw you know the way I interacted with you, you'd make stereotypes about me. Um, if you guys went on my Facebook page or checked out my Twitter or checked out my other YouTube videos, you could probably make bigger you know you'd make other stereotypes. But uh, stereotype is not inherently bad. It's just what you do with stereotypes. So keep that in mind as you as you think about stereotyping. And there's a lot of influences on perception, um, uh, age, culture. Um, Physiology, you know, how you're feeling that particular day. Um, maybe if you're having a bad day, you're, you're going to perceive the people more negatively. And then there's just the self, um, the way you've you've been brought up, influences your perception of others. Uh, and then there's this implicit per personality theory. It's a well, the, the definition on your on your uh, PowerPoint is a collection of unspoken and sometimes unconscious assumptions about how various qualities fit together in human personality. So. Uh, when we have various qualities, we put them into a person, and sometimes those qualities don't fit, then we have problems with that. So it's something we do implicitly. We don't talk about it, but it's something we just kind of uh, interpret. And, of course, your book always likes to give you a little pep talk. 
guidelines for improving perception and communication. And I really want you to just uh, recognize that you have these perceptions, but you want to also guard against uh, making errors in those perceptions and being objective in your perceptions. Um, so it wants you to avoid stereotyping, although I would suggest that stereotyping is a bad, but that's my own. That's that's an error case th theory, not a book theory. So uh, now, if we were in the if we were in a face to face class or, or the hybrid class that I teach in the fall, um, what I would do is I would show a movie clip and I would either not let you hear it or I would not let you see it, um, and then we talk about what how our perception of that movie clip changed. Can't really do that with you guys. I mean, I'd have to figure out a way to make you guys go out your way to watch a video and then you know, change your perception. And then also find a video that you didn't know anything about. So if you want, go find a movie clip um, on YouTube of a movie you haven't seen and just uh, either listen to it without the video or watch it um, without the sound and see how your perception has changed. That's kind of a, an activity about disabled perception. So if either you can't hear, you can't see, um, how your perception changes about that. So I um, can't really do this activity, but if I could, that's what I would do. So if you want to simulate that on your own, you certainly can. Um, I'm not sure it's really going to help you in the in the long run, but it's kind of neat to do uh, the way that you know you change your perception. And I, I usually use the the movie uh, uh, Pursuit of Happiness, uh, the scene where they're in the in the uh, in the subway, and it's this first night of being homeless, and I have them talk about you know what's the relationships of the people in the movie. Uh, based upon if they can just watch it or if they can just share it or what's going on. So, but, and there's a, I also use the uh, meet the parents, couple meet the parents and meet the Fockers uh, scenes as well. Those are some good ones. But something with a lot of things going on visually and a lot or a lot of things going on, um, you know, sound wise. Anyway, if you can do that, but if not, it's fine. Um, the last thing is the ladder of abstraction. I want to talk about and the deal with this is that as you move up the ladder um, I'm sorry as you move yeah let's see here as you yes I'm sorry as you move up the ladder you become more and more abstract so we've got the bottom we've got the name of a cat uh, Sadie it looks like here in this I can't see it very well in what I'm looking at but uh, then you've got classified as a cat animal living thing possession um, as you move up the ladder, you get more, or you get less and less information about what it is, but it becomes more abstract. So you can include more, like possession. There's a lot of possessions. Um, now within possessions, some of those things are living. You know, I have a fish, a dog, I have fish, a dog, some plants. Um, uh, my cat likes to bring in things occasionally. Then I get more living things than I want. Uh, and then animals. Obviously, the, the plants wouldn't classify under that. And then my dog would not be under his cat. And my cat would not be Sadie. So just keep in mind there's a, you can use the same terms or different terms to describe different things and how abstract you are depicts what people are going to perceive about that. So if I just say I have a cat, that really doesn't tell you as much. But if I say hey, I have a cat named PK and she's two years old here in July and um, I adopted her, she was only one pound 11 ounces and uh, she had burnt whiskers, and you get more information based upon how uh, abstract I, or how specific I get. So I can just say cat, or I can go specifically into what it is. Um, and I can say I have a dog, Siggy, and I can say, you know, you have all kinds of different ideas of what Siggy could be, but I say he's a fox terrier mix, and you kind of get an idea of what it is. And um, so we've got some exciting going on the hallway here in Burton Hall. Uh, Alright, so that's the last slide. Uh, next time, um, there's an activity I'm going to talk about here. It's the Connotative Mean Activity. Uh, next time, which I think will be either uh, Tuesday or Wednesday, then we'll be back on track. Um, we're going to talk about the world of words, which is verbal communication, which will be followed by uh, the world beyond word, which is nonverbal communication. So, let's talk about the activity we have for this week. It's a euphemism activity. So um, what I want you to do is think about words that have multiple meanings. So there's a connotative meaning which is, and a denotative meaning. The denotative meaning is like the dictionary definition. The example that's in the assignment is um, they talk about, um, uh, they, well, sex is a good one. It's one of the sex words that they use. Uh, vomit, death, sex, fight, 
prostitute bathroom. So we have a dictionary definition of what sex is. It's either the male or female or, you know, uh, intercourse. But there's all these connotative means associated with sex. And same deal with prostitute, you know, selling, you know, that's selling yourself um, for money. Um, but there's all these connotative definitions of prostitute. Um, fighting, we have, we probably have lots of different uh Connotative meaning, denotative meanings, but we have more connotative meanings. So, what I want you to do is find these, uh, either pick one of these six words or three of these six words, or find a, uh, pick a different word. Maybe pick one of these words and then find two additional words, or pick two of these words and find one additional word. And I want you to think about uh, the, and I want you to find the denotative meaning, which is like the dictionary definition. Go to dictionary.com, or if you have a dictionary, who who reads books anymore um, for that kind of thing. Um, and I want you to give us the dictionary definition and then talk about the connotative meaning, all of the associations you have with that particular word. Um, so, you know, you can talk about sex and it's the gender and that sort of thing, but then all the connotative means you have associated with that. So do that um, once again. Uh, so what means do we attach to these words and why do we attach means to those words? And once again, it's one page times one twelve 12 point double spaced. It's due June 25th, which is next Monday. Um, I think that's all I have that I meant to talk about. And um, once again, thunder up. I think uh, Kevin Durant's going to have a good game tomorrow. Uh, we'll see how that goes. If not, I guess I'll have to uh, recant my prediction here next week. Anyway, uh, have a good uh, rest of your week. I'll probably write another video or another module here tomorrow or the next day. Thank you and have a good day.